Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. First off, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who has already supported my channel in my first video. It really means a lot. And also for everyone that has reached out to me personally and has given me so much positive feedback, I really do appreciate it. So for my second video, which is the one you're currently watching, um, I did want to talk about PCOS. Um, like I mentioned in my first video, I did say that I was diagnosed with it almost 10 years ago. On top of that, I was recently diagnosed with endometriosis as well, which is pretty common when you do have PCOS. It actually is PCOS Awareness Month. PCOS Awareness Month is, I believe, September 10th or 11th till October 1st. So that's what today's video is going to be about. And PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So this is a women's reproductive hormonal disorder. It's not for men. So men, if you're watching this, sorry, you could click out now or you can share it with your wife, girlfriend, friend, sister, whatever. I know when I was diagnosed with PCOS, I didn't really know what it was. I was 19 years old when I was diagnosed with it. So when I was diagnosed with it, I was like really young didn't really care too much about it but now that I'm older I'm married um, you know my husband and I are gonna want to have kids in the future it's scary now so I kind of did my own research with it just because I feel like doctors only give you like the tip of the iceberg as far as information PCOS is an imbalance of hormones like I said before um, the hormone called LH or levels of insulin are too high which causes ovaries to produce extra amounts of testosterone and basically, this could lead to producing cysts on your ovaries, which I do have. And what causes the cyst is your eggs kind of live in a little follicle. It's like a little pocket or a little sack, basically. And every month on your period, the strongest follicle will release that egg. And that's when the egg travels down the fallopian tube and meets the sperm. And when you have PCOS, sometimes those follicles don't release the egg and they just stay there and enlarge and, and eventually become cysts. So you'll have all of these cysts on your ovaries. Eventually they can rupture, which is one of the most painful things ever because I've experienced it. Some of the more common symptoms of PCOS are hair loss, acne, weight gain, um, anxiety, depression, pain, in your like pelvic area and back area, that could be a sign of your cyst rupturing. Um, heavy bleeding during your periods, very severe cramps, excessive hair growth. So if you're experiencing hair growth where men usually grow hair, like on the chin area, the chest, anywhere else, that could be a sign as well. Some of the symptoms I've experienced with PCOS is hair loss, um, weight gain for sure. In case you couldn't tell for the people that do know me, I know I've gotten a little thick. Okay, um, so weight gain, anxiety, depression, not, it's more anxiety, less depression, because overall I feel like I'm a pretty happy person, but my anxiety could like just creep up on me and go into full blown panic attacks. So I have experienced that. Um, what else? I've had like body acne and all of these symptoms have been, I've noticed have crept in after I got off the birth control pills. When I was first diagnosed with PCOS, they immediately put me on a birth control pill and just send me out the door and that was it. That was literally all the information I got. It was like I was told, you're probably gonna have some issues with conceiving later in the future, but here's some birth control, be on your way, bye. So that's why when I was diagnosed with it, I was like, yeah, okay, I could live with this, whatever. But now that I'm here 10 years later, um, I decided to get off the pill and I got off the pill back in May and I just kind of wanted to detox my body from it and get in tune with my body and see how it does without being the, on the pill because I was first put on the pill my freshman year in high school and I was originally put on the pill to control my acne because I had really bad acne when I was a freshman in high school. So that definitely helped with that. And then once I started in college, like 2009, I got off the pill just because I ran out of my packs and I didn't feel like renewing them. And that's when I was diagnosed because I started experiencing all the symptoms. Birth control does help with some of the symptoms like your period and stuff like that, but it doesn't cure your PCOS. PCOS is not curable. There's definitely ways to mask the problems and deal with them but you can't just get rid of PCOS, unfortunately. Birth control does help with some of those symptoms. And when I got off of it back in May, I've experienced so many different changes 
being off of the pill. A lot of pros, but also cons, because like I said, I've experienced more of the symptoms. Like I've noticed with my hair falling out, it started, like it has always fallen out here and there, but ever since I got off the pill, it's fallen out a lot more. Um, I've also gotten like back acne and it's not like terrible. It's just like little bumps on my back and I didn't have those before when I was on the pill and also weight gain, but I mean, I'm kind of responsible for the weight gain too because I didn't eat the best. Um, so there's that. I also noticed like my cravings for food are like through the roof. And when I say cravings, it's not like, oh, I want some ice cream. Let me go get a cup of ice cream. It's like, I need ice cream right now. And then when I eat the ice cream, I want hot Cheetos and I need the hot Cheetos right there and then. And when I'm done with that, I need something sweet again or something savory and it's like never ending and I never get full. And before when I was on the pill, like I did not eat large portions. Like I'd be, I'd eat a couple of bites and be full and done. And I would just snack a lot. That was my problem. But now I feel like I eat for a family of four. Literally I could go to Costco and get like a family meal and down that whole thing. That's how I know it's a problem because before I would eat like a bird and now I'm eating like an elephant. Great. And also moon swings. And I feel bad for my husband for this because one second I'll be happy and in a great mood and within a second Cruella de Vil comes out. And I just, I, I can't help it, you know? And I've definitely noticed that. But like I said, birth control can mask all of these things, but it cannot get rid of it. Unfortunately, there's not a solid treatment for PCOS. There are ways to mask some of the symptoms, like I said before, with birth control. And also living a healthy lifestyle. And this is something that I've had kind of a problem with because I mean, who, seriously, who likes to work out? I mean, I know there are a couple of you that do enjoy working out, but I don't, I really don't. But unfortunately, you're gonna have to work out. Now, when I say work out, I'm not saying like, go run a mile, come back in, do an hour of strength training and weight training, no, 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 no. Because women with PCOS don't really do well with high intense training. So you wanna keep it low intense like maybe some squats you know weight training stuff like that because i read somewhere where if you're putting your body through all this stress your insulin spikes up and all of these problems start happening so even 30 minutes a day of strength training which is something i've been trying to do this week um that'll be fine just as long as you get up and move also clean eating and when I say clean eating, I mean eliminate dairy, gluten, and sugars. Dairy, gluten, sugars. Those three things alone will help tremendously. You'll definitely see a difference just doing that. And for me, hearing that I don't have to run or do cardio, praise Jesus, because I hate cardio. So PCOS, it's actually the leading cause of female infertility. And I always tell my friends, it's funny that when you're in high school or, you know, like starting to become sexually active, we all get so nervous, like, oh my God, I'm, am I pregnant? Am I gonna get pregnant? Like, we feel like it could happen like that, you know? But now that I'm older and I read all of these stories and hear different stories from different women, it's so hard to get pregnant. Like, you literally have one or two days to get pregnant. And then on top of that, when you have infertility issues, who knows, it could take years. And that just blows my mind. So because of that, I started doing my own research and um, trying to figure out how I can avoid a lot of these symptoms and prepare myself to start trying to have a baby. So it is, like I said, a leading cause in infertility. Having PCOS could lead to other serious health conditions like uh, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, um, endometrial cancer, things like that. So it is important to manage your symptoms because if you just let yourself go, a lot of your symptoms and your the PCOS can develop into something more serious. Also, 1 in 10 women are diagnosed with this disorder and I'm 1 in 10, yay. 50% of women go undiagnosed. Now this is huge for me because had I not experienced what I experienced 10 years ago, I probably would have never been diagnosed with it. And I hear so many stories where 
women are experiencing the symptoms, you know, they're having heavy bleeding, very heavy periods, cramping, they go to their doctor and their doctor says, here's some birth control, here's some ibuprofen, and you're good to go. And that just, it literally enrages me when I hear stuff like that because these women are going in there and as a woman, like being, being in my situation and having to explain my symptoms to even certain people, it's like, oh, it's all in your head, like a period's a period, you're supposed to be experiencing pain, you're supposed to be bleeding, you're supposed to be cramping, back pain, all of that. Skrr! No, do not let anyone tell you that. For, that's first thing because so many people have shut me down and made me think I was crazy for experiencing some of the symptoms I was. But I'm telling you right now, you know your body the best, so when you go to the doctor, do not let them just say, here's some birth control pills, here's some ibuprofen, you're good to go. That's first things first. Don't let that happen to you. Luckily for me, I instantly got the diagnosis of PCOS, which I'm very grateful for because here we are 10 years later and I'm very informed on it and I'm trying to, like I said, jump ahead of all of my symptoms. So like I said, 50% of women go undiagnosed and that right there is just mind blowing because it's not that they're not going to their doctor, it's just that some doctors are just not diagnosing them because they're not doing further research or asking the right questions. 50% of women with PCOS will develop type two diabetes. So I'm sorry if this video was kind of all over the place. I just wanted to really shed light on some of the more common symptoms that a lot of the women with PCOS do experience. Um, because like I said, back then when I was first diagnosed with it, I didn't really know too much and I just took my diagnosis and walked out the door with it and didn't look back. You wanna make sure that you have a pelvic ultrasound because that's where they can tell whether you have PCOS or not um, because you will have those follicles within your ovaries that I mentioned before. Get blood work done because a lot of those hormones will show on that blood test, you know, like the LH hormone, testosterone level, your estrogen levels, all of that. I believe those two, the pelvic ultrasound and the blood work, as well as your the symptoms you're experiencing, they do tell a lot. So make sure that you at least get those two things done, blood work and ultrasound. So make sure your doctor asks the right questions and that you ask the right questions as well so that you don't leave that office without having the proper answers. I'll have more information listed down below in the description box. So go ahead, go down below if you think that you could have PCOS and haven't been diagnosed with it. Definitely do your research, go see your doctor, have that conversation, and make sure you don't just get sent out the door. So that's it for my video. That's all the information I have right now. Um, please feel free to ask me any questions down below or reach out to me if you have my number or on my social media. My social media, I'll pin it right here. My Instagram is Bianca Danielle with two underscores after that. I'm constantly on there. So comment down below if you do have PCOS or if you have any questions. Um, I wanna see how you guys manage your symptoms or what symptoms you guys have. I'm all here for it. And also, before I leave, I forgot a major thing. If you haven't already, go on like, if you're on social media at all, like Facebook, also Reddit is a good place, and Instagram, just follow as many PCOS blogs and hashtags as you can because that's where I've gained a lot more information on PCOS is just hearing other women's stories. There's so much information out there, especially now with having social media, there's just an endless amount of information. So go follow all of those blogs and like groups and different things. I'll try to link them down below, the ones that I'm a part of, just because it's so helpful and it's good feeling that you're not alone in this because sometimes it can get dark and feel like you're the only one experiencing all of this. But once I joined all of those groups and saw that there's so many more women with this unfortunate disorder, it kind of made me feel better about it. Share this video with as many people as you can because like I said, it is PCOS Awareness Month and it's almost over. It'll be over next Tuesday, I believe is October 1st. So let's shed light on PCOS and try to help as many women as we can that haven't been diagnosed because like I said, 50% of women go undiagnosed. Let's try to minimize that number. With word of mouth and just you know checking in with your doctor, we can definitely bring that number down. And if I said anything that wasn't right about PCOS, I'm sorry, like I'm not a doctor. This is just stuff that I've researched on my own and experienced. So please don't come for me. 
thank you guys so much for watching i know this was a bit of a longer video but if you're still here i appreciate you so much don't forget to like this video subscribe hit that notification bell so you get alerted when i do post more videos and i will see you guys in my next video thank you again so much for watching bye Blah. that's what obviously i literally just said that All right. Damn. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, what was that? I know y'all see these grays. Oh, I'm getting old. Seriously, you guys have been laying down all day. And the minute I turn the camera on, you guys want to be acting up, huh? Bye.